Rim to rim to rim. Traffic jam at the start, but here we go. Alright, the uh, crowds from the start have cleared out a little bit. Um, I started my run at like 6.15 and one of the hikers express shuttles had just let out so there were a bunch of people at the start but it's starting to thin out now. We just passed Skeleton Point so we're about three miles in. We are making our way down the Great Wall. Very rocky and rugged technical section in my opinion. This is the hardest part of the climb out and coming down. Um, it's just a lot of awkward steps like this. Um, but making good time so far, I'm like 29 minutes in. Um, plan, like I mentioned earlier, is to go rim to rim to rim hoping that would be possible. There's a lot of snow in the north rim still and there's been some damage to the trail from some rock slides and that sort of thing with all the snow and the snow melting. So I'm hoping to get up there. I know some people have done it but I know a lot of people are also turning back so we'll see but uh, I'm hoping I'll probably get most of my footage from there since I just did a video of the cowboy loop a few weeks ago if you guys haven't checked that out so a lot of this might look familiar but I think once we get past Phantom Ranch I'll uh, start to film a lot more I do have some rim trim trim videos on YouTube already but why not make another one right so anyway we're out here it's a very beautiful morning um, I've already shed my layers I had on at the start. It's supposed to warm up to 72 on the rim today, which means it should be probably high 80s down on the canyon floor, which will be awesome. But uh, once we start climbing to the north rim, that sits at 8,000 feet, so we'll uh, be postal in for a while, assuming we can make it, which hopefully we can. Approaching tip off, and we have a mule train stationed there. So it looks like we'll be able to go in front of these guys, which is good. But you always have to give mules the right away when you're in the canyon. They're, uh, they rule the road here, so whatever the ranger instructs, you have to do. Which is good etiquette. So I'm gonna slow down actually until we pass them. We're approaching my favorite stretch to run of the South Kaibab Trail. I called this section the roller coaster. I talked about it a little bit in my last video. And I think we can actually, yep, see the river here. Absolutely beautiful. But this section, it kind of winds down that red hillside in front of us. And it's just super fast and runnable. I'm not gonna go too crazy right now I've been pretty conservative on this descent there's nothing like getting to the bottom of the canyon and blowing your legs out and when you're doing the rim to rim to rim you know when you reach the river it hasn't even started yet so definitely not bombing this drop but making pretty good time still also I haven't run down South Kaibab in a while 
forget how rugged it is compared to Bright Angel. I think the last time I ran down this trail was August. I've done a few cowboy loops since then going the other way, but uh, yeah, I actually uh, had my bachelor party here, which was awesome. I uh, got married in September also here at uh, the Grand Canyon spot called Shoshone Point which is up that way ish somewhere but anyway so for my bachelor party it was perfect it was me and eight of my running friends well seven of my running friends there were eight of us total we just came to the canyon and ran down South Kai Bob up Bright Angel spent the day here and uh it's perfect you know, what better way to uh, celebrate than to be running in the canyon with your friends. But anyway, we should be uh, less than two miles to the river now. So we will uh, check in then. Approaching the river. I'm at 105, 20, hour and five minutes and 20 seconds. Which might be a new PR for me. Just trying to take it easy on this descent, but I felt like I was. But... And here we are. <clears throat> Looks like the river is starting to go back to its emerald greenish color. It's still a little bit muddy and murky, but not quite as much as it was last time I was here, which I think was two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. And I say it a lot, but no matter how often I'm down here, it just never gets old. Just for good measure, elevation loss, 4,629 feet. Elevation gain, zero. But today we're doing two climbs. So instead of having to climb 4,600 feet, it's actually gonna be closer to 11,000 feet. So uh, we got a lot of climbing to do today, but so far, so good. Going through Phantom Ranch. These are all the dorms that you can win a permit to stay at. Here's the lodge. I don't think it's open yet. I think they open at eight and it's 7.50. I wonder if, yeah, it looks like they're still operating out of the side here. This should open back up, I mean, good night. It's been what, two years, three years? Someone left a goo. <laughs> anyway, just thought I'd show that. We're gonna keep moving forward to the North Rim. The North Kaibab Trail just follows Bright Angel Creek for a good seven or eight miles, kind of until you hit Manzanita. And hopefully, you can see it in here back there. The creek is raging right now, and it's awesome. There's been several warning signs posted along the trail about the conditions past Manzanita, how it's not recommended. 
say uh, three to five feet of snow, trail damage, rock falls, icy conditions. So we'll see. This is kind of interesting. We had a little water crossing here. We were rock hopping. But look at this. It's like coming up from the ground. Pretty neat. So I don't know if that's a crack in the pipe. I don't think it is. Or just some kind of an underwater spring or reservoir popping up. Pretty cool. Just climbed up the very aptly named Asinine Hill. So now we're making our way down. You can see the creek down there, Ribbon Falls is back that way. Saw some hikers going towards Ribbon. Uh, might hit it on the way back. Not sure, I haven't been there in a while. It's one of my favorite spots. Don't really want to get my feet wet, but maybe we'll go there. Uh, just passed a couple of hikers, said they were trying to get to the North Rim. They turned around at the first snowbank, so they didn't say where that was, but they said they had uh, talked to some people that had made it, said it's doable, but it's just hard, so. We'll see what it's like. All right, just a little update. We're a little over 15 and a half miles in. We are approaching the final footbridge. There's six foot footbridges across along Brain Angel, uh, Brain Angel Creek. So this is the last one. See the creek here, beautiful. We are approaching Manzanita rest area, also known as the Aiken House, named after uh, Bruce Aiken, National Park employee that actually lived down here. He, uh, his job was to inspect the water, check the water levels, check its purity, check the pump houses, make sure everything was going good. So they actually built this house down here for him. And he lived down here with his family for 30 years. And then he retired. So now it's a ranger station and also a rest area, but that's why it's called the Aiken House. So it looks like there's some people here. It looks like some runners. So let's see if we can get some intel on uh, how the trail conditions are. So we just uh, left Manzanita. Thought I'd point out something pretty cool. So right along the other side of the creek, you can kind of see a trail winding up. That is Old Bright Angel Trail, is what it's called. Um, and it's not maintained anymore. After the North Cobb Trail got built in like the 1930s, somewhere around there, um, Old Bright Angel kind of became obsolete but you can still use it to get to the rim. It's just a little more rugged and stuff because it's not maintained. But yeah, that's old Bright Angel Trail winding along here. So you can see the North Rim up ahead where all the snow is. So I heard a few things talking to some of the guys there at Manzanita. Um, kind of more of the same, just that it gets bad after Redwall Bridge. But I did hear from a guy who said he talked to a backpacker. Look at all those cascading waterfalls. And he said that the snow that you actually step in doesn't really go above your ankles just because it's kind of already been post hold. So if that's the case, that seems fine. Really hoping that we can make it up there. Uh, because I really like to get all the vert in. I was thinking if I can't make it up there, I might uh, do a little side trek up Clear Creek or something like that, just for some added vert. So I like to get to 10,000 feet today. I think that'll be a really good barometer of where I'm at, fitness-wise, going into Cocodona, which this is kind of my last big effort before Coconona, which is in three weeks, which is crazy. But uh, 
yeah, I'm feeling strong. I feel ready for it. Uh, way more than I did last year. Plus I have the confidence that I've actually done it. So uh, yeah, I feel good about where I'm at. I've been doing a lot of miles. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of using today as a gauge where I'm at fitness wise. So whether it's all the way up to the North Rim or other trails, I'd like to get at least 10,000 feet of vert in today. But we're uh, climbing right now. This is kind of where the trail really starts to climb is after Manzanita. So it's about five miles from Manzanita to the top of the North Rim. And we've got, I don't know, like 4,000 feet of climbing. So should be fun. So we're making our way around this bend. So far the trail's been good, just a lot of rock fall. But I've never seen a waterfall here. I don't know if you can see, but that's coming down from way up top there. All the way down. And flowing down into that way. That's super cool. <laughs> okay, another new waterfall with all the snow melt here. From up that way. Again, never seen water coming from up there. It's absolutely beautiful. It's really cool too, like just hearing everything. As we're hiking up this trail, you can just hear the roars of waterfalls from like a few different spots where there typically aren't any. But with all the snow melt, it's just gorgeous. Wow. I'm actually getting missed it a little bit. Whew. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Whew. Okay, this is that same waterfall. You can actually see it coming down from all the way up top. Hopefully you can see that. Absolutely amazing. Just saw a runner coming down this way. He said he made it to the top. He said he didn't need spikes. He said it wasn't that bad. So that's good news. Um, he was quick. He was cruising down this hill. So uh, yeah, it's a good sign. Okay, this spot is where I had heard of people turning around. I've also heard of people going down this way. This honestly doesn't look too bad. I just saw two hikers in front of me, or runners. They made it. Oh gosh, I'm getting misted. And that water is cold. Holy cow, dude. Ah! Jeez. All right. <laughs> Wasn't too bad. Got a little wet. Uh, I think uh, some snow just fell from up there too. Hopefully the video picked that up. That was pretty neat. But uh, all right. <laughs> Made it across that. And so now, we just have to deal with all the post holing. Uh, dig it up to the rim. You can see some of the rock fall here. There's been a lot of this on the trail since Manzanita. We just crossed <clears throat> Redwall Bridge. I think you can see it right now, but probably you'll see it here in a second. Uh, past two runners. She said they turned around and passed two more. I said they made it to the top, but that it was slow going. So I think the plan still is to try to make it to the top, 
even if it is slow going, uh, be fine. So, let's see if you can see the bridge at the end of the switchback. Yep, there we go. Good old red wall bridge. And now these last two and a half miles are uh, really gonna climb. Right, going under another waterfall. Very refreshing. <laughs> Beautiful. There's been a couple sections of the trail that got pretty badly damaged. One in particular, the trail was pretty much gone and it was like a sheer cliff on the other end. So it's passable, but not for, uh, not for the faint of heart, I would say. made it to Supai Tunnel. Um, this is where it's supposed to get pretty bad as far as the snow goes. Man, my legs feel heavy right now. Holy cow. <laughs> That's crazy. Before the tunnel, there wasn't that much snow, and all of a sudden, it's just mounds of it. All right, we're gonna keep going. We've entered a winter wonderland here, but it's actually not too bad. The snow's pretty compact, so pretty much just walk on top. You can see how far in my posts are, my poles are going. But this is all pretty compact, so, so far it's not too bad. Approaching Coconino Overlook. Very beautiful. You can see how much snow is still on the trail, judging by the sign. That was actually completely covered recently, so it is melting a little bit, but there's still a lot of snow on the ground. And, uh, should be about seven tenths of a mile from the top. And I'm looking forward to being at the top because I got a Coke and some Lay's potato chips calling my name. We are approaching the top. I'm at six hours and 17 minutes. Not too bad, I probably lost half hour to 45 minutes because of these conditions. But uh, went down a few times, yeah. A couple guys up here. There's one I put my foot in and sunk all the way down and snow's about waist deep. So anyway, glad to be at the top. All right, getting ready to head back down soon. Just wanna show you guys how much snow is up here. It's insane. So this is a road sign. You can see this is the main road to get to the Northern Visitor Center. It's that way, but you can just see the snow banks. It's crazy. This is normally the parking lot for North Kaibab. You can see the bathroom way back in the distance. And here, this is like the information sign. You guys are sitting on the roof eating, which I was just doing too. These guys are sitting on the water station. And then over here, this is the North Kaibab trail sign. Barely even see the top of it. Unbelievable. 
I've got micro spikes on. I'm not sure what good they'll do, honestly, but we're gonna head back in. Six hours and 18 minutes, 21 and a half miles, and then we'll check our elevation. We've got about 6,000 feet of gain, 5,000 feet of loss, and we're at 8,200 feet elevation right now. So yeah, this is a tough climb from the snow. I've done this climb I don't know, five or six times now? Five times on a rim to rim to rim, and then I've done some other hikes in the North Rim, climbing this trail, but these, uh, it's passable for sure. I mean, obviously, because guys that are doing it, but it's just very, very slow going. And uh, I usually make up a lot of time on this descent, but it's uh, not gonna be the case today, so slow going up and it's gonna be slow going down too but that's okay so i just went down uh into a little hole in the snow and that's how deep it is that is my pole so that's like i don't know Four feet, at least. <sighs> Crazy. So we're about to make our way through Supai Tunnel again. And this is crazy. All that snow, right, that we've been going through, it just starts after the tunnel. Like there's no gradual progression. It's like dry, and then you cross through this tunnel and then it's snow a little bit but that's okay this is a uh, pretty muddy but anyway so check it out and there's little patches down there but as far as the trail goes once we get through this little chunk we are dry again which is so weird to me how it just suddenly changes but uh yeah I got my Spikes off, and hopefully, this is still a little bit muddy right here, but hopefully we can start moving a little bit quicker here pretty soon. You can see Redwall Bridge down there. Beautiful view. But anyway, thankfully, or I'm thankful to be back on dry trails again. So now we gotta navigate all the rock falls, but like I said, hopefully that it's dry it can actually move a little bit better. All right, so this is the sketchy part of the trail that I mentioned earlier that's kind of, I mean, gone <laughs> just from all these rock falls. Um, it's not too bad. It looks worse than it is. I don't know how bad it looks in the camera, but like that's pretty solid right there. And then you can just kind of hop your way across. Um, to come this way, this hole in the rock right here kind of acted like a good handhold, or it might have been this one. And again, like, you don't want to fall, but that's pretty solid. So just kind of have your fingers in there, have your foot planted there, and then you can just go across just like that. So not too bad, but again, I know people were turning around here, which I can see because you never want to do something that you're not comfortable with and uh yeah some people uh, are a little more cautious which is probably a good thing but so not too bad that's the worst of it as far as trail damage the rest of it is just a lot of rock fall and then a lot of snow uh so just wanted to show you guys that we're making our way towards red wall bridge as you can see and i'm thinking What's stopping at Ribbon Falls on the way back? Um, I think it'd be cool to see with all the water. And my feet are already wet from trudging through all that snow, so uh, yeah, I think I might do it. All right, approaching Redwall Bridge. First of six foot bridges along North Kaibab. This is the biggest one. The other five aren't until you get past 
Manzanita, but pretty cool bridge to run across. And again, all that water runoff that's going down there, never seen before or heard. So this is cool. It's like a very, it's like a new experience being on the side of the canyon with all this runoff. It's really cool. We've reached the uh, junction for Ribbon Falls. Problem is there's no bridge. So there's two ways to get here until the bridge is repaired. Uh, if you go up and over this hill, you can dip down into the creek. It's a little shallower or you can cross where the bridge used to be uh, and the water's just a little bit deeper. You can kind of see it flowing down there. So we're gonna go this way to not uh, have to backtrack by going up and over and then across the creek and then back. Uh, so here is where the bridge was. And that's where it went. That's what we got across. Looks like there's a good path to do it there. Might even be able to stay dry. There's kind of a rock, might be able to jump. So we're gonna make our way over there. We made it. Ribbon Falls. Absolutely incredible. There's no one else here, which is great. Uh, so, I don't want to stay too long, but I'm going to go up behind the falls. Uh, and then probably just take a couple of pictures and head back. Steep. Here we are. Behind Ribbon Falls. Incredible. It's one of my favorite places in the world that I've been to. Just awesome. Beautiful. You can hear the frogs over there. <laughs> Super cool. I believe this is footbridge number four, counting in reverse order. <laughs> so, three more to go. Um, currently eating fruit snacks. Delicious. Okay, getting ready to cross the Colorado River for the second time today. Not moving nearly as fast as I was for the first crossing, but that's okay. Absolutely beautiful. 
Should have a nice sunset for the climb out. It's like 547. Um, this usually takes me like two and a half hours to climb. Um, so right now, you can see we're at 36.71 miles. Overall time is 10 hours, 21 minutes. So I think if I can get under 13 hours, that'd be, that'd be good. Not my quickest time, not my slowest time, but not my quickest, but uh, the trail conditions coming down and up North Kaibab probably cost at least an hour. Because coming down was almost as slow as going up was for some of those miles. And let's also check this just for fun. Elevation loss, 10,873. Elevation gain, 6,329. So those numbers will probably be close to being equal. Well, yeah, they should be equal. So uh, got some climbing to do. Working our way up this climb. Sun starting to set. This will probably be the last shot of the river before it gets too dark out, but what a beautiful evening. And really just a beautiful day here at Grand Canyon. Um, almost to Cedar Ridge. I'm gonna be finishing in the dark, so I'm gonna put my Kogala on, probably at Cedar Ridge. Um, so yeah, well, I won't do a whole lot more filming just because it'll be dark, but I will definitely check in when we're at the top. I don't know why, I think my last video I said we're almost at Cedar Ridge. Uh, we're not almost at Cedar Ridge, we're almost at tip off. So I wanted to correct that just in case. I screwed that up because for some reason I think I did. So anyway, tip off is straight ahead. We're approaching the top of South Kaibab. Thank you, Lord. Oh man, that was hard. But we made it and Epic day. Epic day. So, I, shoot, not like 13 hours and one minute. So, didn't quite make sub 13, but I'm just gonna touch the sign here, make it official. It's 43.16, 13 hours, one minute. It's gonna be two minutes by the time I shut this off and elevation gain and loss, almost 10,000 feet. So we're gonna pause that. Now we got the one mile back to the truck. Uh, yeah, epic day. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that footage of the North Rim, all the waterfalls and all the snow. It's pretty cool. Uh, different for me to see all that. So that's my last big effort before Coca Dona. I uh, don't know that I'll do another video before then. I might, I might not. We'll see what kind of trails I stumble upon. Um, but if not, thanks as always for watching. Make sure to like and comment and subscribe. And we'll see you guys at Coca Dona.